Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. My name is Gary Tucker, and I love watercolor. What I want to show you today is how I approach a subject in terms of lights and darks. And I'm going to start that approach using a single color. In this case, I'm using neutral tint, uh, which is equivalent to black. The quality of neutral tint is that there's no real coolness or warmness to the color. And I'm going to be using a grayscale to help me. I'll explain this more as we get along in the video. And in, partic in particular, I'm going to be trying to unify the darks uh, through this painting. So let's get started. Let's do a painting. Well, I'm taking you back to Venice in a workshop that I gave this past summer looking towards uh, the Squero, which is a repair facility uh, on the other side of the canal. We painted here one morning, and I was especially attracted by the working scene, men working over boats, the uh, rustic quality of the wood in the shop, all appealed to me. But it's a very complex scene. And when I start a complex scene, I like to think again about a simple tonal value structure lights and darks, and you can see my value scale here. I talk about it more in depth in the description. If you search the description below this video, you'll see a link to a PDF that describes this tonal value scale in more detail. Anyway, this is my drawing, and you can see I've laid it out um, based on the figures and how they relate to the boats. And once I have the drawing in place, I start uh, to approach the painting from a lighter value, from the lightest value. And my thinking is to establish the lights and the white of the paper first. And after establishing the lighter values, I'll move on to the mid value. And the mid value I consider to be um, probably the more important of these values because it really sets the tone for how much light, how bright the light is, the quality of the painting overall. In fact, the mid value tends to be the larger of the two. But in any case, I'm starting with a big brush and establishing the bigger shapes, the light, light quality of the, um, the reflective nature of the wood, the figures, and so on. And I'm trying to do this quickly and with a lot of fluidity, trying to keep a gestural effect as I work the brush across the paper. And a lot of things happen on the way, a lot of skips and uh, missed strokes that I try to capitalize, capitalize on later. And I'll try to point that out as we move through the painting. You can see the scene, in fact, you take shape very quickly. And this is the overall feeling that I'm looking for. And at this stage, I feel um, I've let the paper dry. I'm coming back in with a bigger brush and I'm going right to my center of interest, which is this main gondola and the workmen that surround it. And I'm working with my midtone. I realize that in looking at this video, you probably feel, well, he's working with his strongest dark right now. Uh, but this can be a little deceptive, not just because of the video, because I'm working with neutral tint or very dark color. And this can play a little trick on us because even in the palette, even if we've diluted it in the palette, it can still look quite dark. And for this reason, I like to use a neutral tint or black or a very strong sepia when I'm doing my tonal studies or when I'm doing my single color painting because I tend to focus more on the textural quality of the paint as opposed to how it appears uh, on the palette. And this is a great uh, reminder to me about the importance of picking up on the consistency of the paint. And I believe that uh, if you approach your painting uh, with a tonal study in the beginning, you'll pick up on the same qualities that I find, which is when I'm working with a light, 
pigment, a light color, a light tonality. The paint is very diluted. Uh, when I move to a mid value, I want a thicker quality. That's what you're seeing me paint now is um, paint with a thicker quality. And as this dries, and as I place some darks next to it, you'll realize that yes, the paint was pretty well diluted. However, this mid-tone, as I said, is, is quite important because it establishes the overall quality of the painting. In fact, I've, in most of my work, the mid-tone is the dominant tone. And there's a lot of flexibility uh, within the mid-range. So you can go on the lighter side, you can go on the darker side. I feel I'm working with a pretty strong mid-tone today. And I want you to observe how I'm connecting this mid-tone. I feel that's uh, a really important concept, um, especially with, um, with the darker passages, to connect the darker passages. Or uh, if the painting is based on uh, very light areas, connecting those lights. So making connections, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, making connections with your tones or colors, if you're working in color, is an important concept. And you can see that at this stage, you can see how this mid-tone is joined from right to left. It spans the width of the painting, and it spans, uh, as, you, as it comes to a conclusion, you'll see that that same mid-tone is passing from top to bottom. What you see me doing here is adding a bit of dry brush. Look at how the brush is flattened out. And there's very little paint on the brush. And I'm making use of the rough quality of the paper to achieve a textural effect in the wood. And uh, it also helps to connect this uh, mid-tone quality uh, I'm not using a lot of paint, but I'm blocking in a tonality that's very similar to the um, tones above and below. So connecting the mid-tones, connecting the dark passages also is important in this painting. Here you can see I'm placing just a hint of the canal Again, making use of some of that dry brush. And this is also now touching to the shadow. So we're connecting the, the mid-tone very directly through the whole painting. This gives the painting a visual integrity. And if we leave our mid-tone or if we leave our darks scattered across the paper, it tends to be more of a distraction and tends to, our eye tends to bounce around, whereas we, if we connect them as I'm doing here, uh, we feel a very strong sense of integration and an integrity in the overall painting. What you see me doing now is starting to place the darkest hues. And I'm using a smaller brush with a very nice tip. My hand, if you'll notice, is very far down on the brush to give me a lot of control. Typically when I'm working in uh, the earlier passages, my hand is back towards the back of the brush. I feel this allows me to bring more of a gestural feel to the, the strokes. And I do try to maintain that uh, calligraphic aspect or the gestural aspect, even though I'm working uh, uh, with the small marks. I try to maintain that as a sort of expressive quality in the painting, expressive through the brushwork. And now that the mid-tone is dry, you can see that, yes, the, um, it had dried quite a bit lighter than it went on. And uh, again, this is due to the consistency of the paint. It appeared dark when we first applied it, but as that paint has now dried, we can see that it's lightened quite a bit and giving us 
um, a lot of room to add darks. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to establish the real strong darks in the back of the painting and build up the shadow areas. At the same time, build up some areas that are um, coming forward. Uh, I'll address this gondola and add strong darks as well to the front and underside of the gondola to bring that forward. I really recommend you look below after looking at this video, look below at the description and uh, check the PDF that's included. It's a nice bonus. This gives you a little more information on on what uh, the, the importance of the value scale and the importance of sort of simplifying your tonal approach into three main tonal values, a light, a mid-tone, and a dark. And of course we include the white of the paper in that as well, so it's really a four tones that we're concerned about when we're simplifying like this. As we add these dark tones, I'm always surprised by how bright the light becomes. Of course, it should be obvious with the addition of the strong darks, those light areas are made to feel even brighter. So now the sunlight moving across the scene is really tangible and, and uh, uh, coming close to what we experienced when um, standing in front of the Squero in Venice. Having gone through this process of painting the tonal study, I feel uh, much more secure with the image in general, understanding it from a point of view of light and dark and uh, some of the passages of brushwork that I've created. So moving on to a version of color is going to be much easier. Well, you're seeing the final touches, which bring a little texture to the foreground. Um, I'm adjusting areas as well. That means, you know, blurring some edges, sharpening others, pushing things back, even adding highlights at the end. This is basically adding uh, the fi uh, finishing feel to the to the painting. Well, here's the finished version, and I hope you can see how the tonal values were simplified into a light, a medium, and a dark. I know that they've been um, adjusted and made a little more complex, but the basic structure is there. Hi, everyone. Well, that was uh, the painting, in essence, and what I'm hoping you gathered from this painting and my commentary is that for any subject, having an understanding of how your lights and darks, darks are organized is really helpful, and it's a freeing exercise. And let's look again at this value scale, going from very light to very dark, over nine iterations. 10 if we include white. These three bars rec re represent a value range, a kind of grouping of similar values to give me a more um, accurate understanding of what my lights are gonna be, what my mid-tones gonna be, and also what my darks are gonna be. Hopefully through the, the process of this painting, you were able to see where I isolated the light tone in the beginning where I surrounded that light tone with a mid-tone, which follows this water through the shed up into the right-hand corner and over a lot of the small pieces in the mid-ground, and then finally concentrating the lights um, in my main subject of the gondola uh, and the repairman. So that's uh, how I look at lights and darks and how I think about them in my painting. And um, I hope that was a valuable exercise. Next week, I'm going to show you how I develop this concept in color. So it's a two-part series, and I hope you'll follow along for the second part as well.